So with that, I'll now introduce uh, our speaker for today, Upendra. So Upendra has is a very experienced engineer. He has more than uh, 20 years of experience uh, in telecom. He uh, joined today. He's senior staff at Qualcomm, but he started his career uh, in uh, Norton Networks as a software engineer. And very quickly, he graduated from a software engineer to an architect role. And for a long time uh, in Nautil Networks uh, and uh, other Saskin and uh, uh, Texas Instruments, he has fulfilled the role of uh, software architect. So before joining Qualcomm, he was again an architect at Radisys. Today, uh, what is his role uh, as senior staff in Qualcomm? Uh, he represents Qualcomm in international standardization bodies. Specifically, uh, he is a representative at the GSMA as well as 3GPP. So it's not an exaggeration to say that Upendra is uh, uh, kind of steering the way of the standards and the future technologies. So today we have 5G, tomorrow we will have 6G, 7G, and Upendra is uh, at the center of these changes. So with this in short introduction, I would like to now pass the mic to Upendra. Upendra, over to you. Thank you, Erwin. First of all, thanks for the Devopedia team for organizing all these presentations and doing good knowledge sharing among all the engineers. OK, OK, so today's I try to keep the today's presentation as simple as possible. No technical uh, call flows or uh, design diagrams. It is all on the overview how we evolved from the 1G to the 5G and each of the generation from the standards industry, from the operator perspectives, from the OEMs perspective, what is being changed? We have all been a part of the journey, which we have seen, but that is what I just tried to put it into slides. Let us go through that one. So we are now into 5G and we are into interactive calling. So that is where in the end final we'll go, but let us start from the introduction. So with the invention of the telephone, one of the OK, a uh, good part of that one is communication. So even though when you are far, you can communicate with all your family, friends and everyone. OK, so when we see we are into it has been invented in 1876 and then all the way to the landline phones to the normal 1G, 2G phones and then to the iPhones and all the smartphones. That is how all we are going. So just to tell I have a IIT Bombay pass route engineer joining my team last week. So when I'm telling, OK, while com communicating with a landline phone, so what he told is what is landline phone? So the generation have moved so far. OK, so now people don't know what is landline phones. What are the problems what we face it? They are this is the smartphone generation kids. Okay, so but still we need to maintain the backward compatibility. Need to see what are the landline phones earlier, at least in our office cubicles. We used to see that now those are also have been removed. OK, then out of all the services, what has been provided by our mobile phone? OK, voice has become a vitally important role. That is actually the one which have driven mobile phone evolution. OK, after voice, yes, there are a lot of things. Now if you talk, the youngsters are using for gaming they are using for virtual reality uh, xr all those applications but if you see what is the primary factor for driving these mobile phones is voice okay starting from 1g which we say ams to the 2g which you say gsm and then 3g 4g and we all i came from this all this era where all work and all the technologies i still remember my blackberry days where all the new new apps have been given with respect to navigation OK, and then the smartphone came and they have taken the. All the services to a next level. So how all started? We said we have the traditional voice services. We have the SMS and then the video calling. Then from the 4G, we'll go through each one in detail. We got a rich communication services. OK, and then we got Wi-Fi calling. We have enriched calling, so we'll talk. And in the end, now what the technology is driving is towards a IMS data channel, which they want to the services, interact to services. OK, so as I told in this presentation, we'll go to the evolution of multimedia services. When we talk about PSTN and all the landline phones, we have a physical connections. We have all the connections. OK, and then when we say 1G, 2G, 3G, 
Okay, we have all the circuit switch networks coming over there just to give you a level. But with 4G, when hello. Hello. I miss yeah, you. Yeah, there is a slight in. disturbance. Please carry on. Okay. Okay, so then we got with all L 4G being a PS network, which is packet switched network, there is no more circuit switched from 4G LTE. So then we got a IP. We need to use voice over LTE. Then we came to use the IMS multimedia subsystem. Okay, this IMS multimedia subsystem is also present from olden days in 2000, but it has never kicked in. But that means neither the operators embrace it or the technology. Okay, but with Volte, being all packet switched network, this IMS again came to the front end and it has provided you that framework. Okay, so of merging all the voice, video, voice, video, data, and there should be packet synchronization, how it will be done. This will be going to different networks. So that is where IMS came into picture back with Volte. The same IMS framework is also used by 5G. And with all IP networks, there is a lot of uh, applications coming into picture, a lot of flexibility even at the standardization level or the user consumer level. Okay, it has been there. So let us talk to voice calls. So voice calls all started as we know with the traditional PSTN lines, correct? And then we said GSM, which is a wireless technology, and then GPRS where they've added a little bit of data to that wireless. And then the 3G came when they said, okay, let us give a little speed. So till here, it is all CS plus PS type of circuit switched on the packet switching networks. With a 4G LTE, that's what I was mentioning earlier. It is all PS networks. So with the evolution of this technology, the type of codecs what we use, everything also has evolved. Okay, so we use a now ultra wideband codecs, which give good voice calling features. Okay, and also the quality has improved a lot, even at a cell edge scenarios or inside a building scenarios. Simple things like if you are talking and you entered a lift and the lift door closed, okay, they usually shut and drop in the signal stand. And again, the lift door open. Sometimes, hello, 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 we keep on talking in the lift. Okay, such type of problems which we used to see earlier. Now, with the evolved technologies, we have solved all those issues. We know, okay, this has been entered. The user have entered an area where the signal is not there. So then we improve other things so that the voice quality is not deterred. Okay, so with this call continuity is one of the main priority in all those things. It has poses different challenges because here it is all CS networks. It is all the PS networks. So if I move from one area to other area, okay, how do I continue? How do I establish the call? How do I establish the barriers? At the same time, how do I ensure that the power, mobile power is one of the major concerns? Earlier used to be for a voice, but now with all the data coming over there, okay, so data is taking more power than voice. So it's somehow we are less concerned about power, but earlier, yes, power is also one of the major things. What types of codecs are you using that consume amount of powers and everything? So this is standard, which we know. And then slowly comes with the SMS. So SMS we all know is for the text messages, which is used. The main difference between any of our traditional WhatsApp, whatever you're using, these are all using a data centric path. Okay, they are not, they are using Wi-Fi or they're using mobile data type of thing. They are not voice centric, but SMS is still tied up with voice. That is the main difference between SMS and other services over here. Okay, and then with SMS, people try to text only text as usual, right? People are once more. So at that time we got MMS. MMS is for multimedia. I can also send multimedia as SMS, but MMS was not so much a hit because it has its own multimedia challenges, which the traditional CS networks may not able to support. If you remember old and days, a multimedia file used to come and we with our phone may not support the corresponding codec. It has been decoded to and then play it out type all those things. OK, so these are the traditional reason. And hey, the next Mira, one, do you want to take questions? Somebody has raised a hand. Yeah, sure. I am not seeing. Yes, tell me. Yeah, hi, Upendra. So I have a question. Uh, you say SMS still works on the fundamental voice. 
yes rather than the data but could you just clarify that a little bit uh, what do you mean by that okay so for your sms to work okay you need to have voice service enabled that is what i mean so for okay. your whatsapp whenever you do text type of things right it is not tied up with voice okay okay if you go little bit into technical uh, sure. details okay for sms i would need to know which rat supports sms for me so whether a 5g rat supports 4g rat supports 3g rat so there is a ue which selects which of the rat is radio access technology okay whether which rat to select so based on if voice is not supported i leave that one and i go from 5g to 4g for example my 5g network provides data only services and in that area voice is not supported okay i don't stay in that the u doesn't stay in that 5g network only for sms it goes to voice it goes to 4g lt their voice is supported and then it is tied up with voice sms will be supported in that way sms is always tied up with voice automatically so it is uh mm. standalone sms is not there is not for there. example okay. if you take whatsapp if you take any of those things right they are standalone it has nothing to do with your voice it is mostly to do with your wifi connection it has to do with your mobile data connection got it but sms is not there. thank you so but much. it but it depends on the ue right okay whether you whether you will support or not because ue can have different different uh, uh features configure so depends mm -hmm. on the ue we can uh, like some area we will have sms or some area we will don't have right depends no, on the UE. ue can say traditionally all you support sms okay UEs can only tell its capabilities. It is a network which says that I need to support SMS or not, right? So at a UE level, there is nothing like that area. I in this particular area, in in one technology I support SMS, in other technology we don't support because SMS has become so basic, it has to be supported by everywhere. But operators had made lot of money with the traditional SMS during the 2G, 3G days. because that is the way of communicating to the users for any of your ivr any of the sm community yeah but at the end sms converts to what like the voice like has a different channel like that sms goes via what okay still sms goes via your raps right when you are talking about technical things right? that is that goes yeah. it doesn't it doesn't require any your dedicated bearer it requires only your control bearers so it goes through one of your nas messages srb3 srb4 at a level of your rr okay. so it is always associated with voice you need to it is there is no ue capability you can say i want to support sms or not but by default you don't have a user has not been given that option of it is so it will always be supported so it is always the network part which it goes Okay. Another way, another way to answer this is probably to say that SMS goes on a circuit switched bearer. So in that sense, it is closer to voice than to packet data. Yes, isn't it? Now, with LTE and 5G coming into picture, there is no thing concept of circuit switch, right? It is all yeah. IP. SMS goes over IMS. Okay, okay. But still, IMS is voice centric. If voice is not there, IMS is not there in that. Okay, okay. okay. Got it. So yeah, but in five, but in five G, the IMS the 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 divided right uh, to different different. Let's parts. Uh, move on. Uh, we'll move on. Park your question. There is a Q and A uh, in the teams, yeah. so you can ask your questions. We'll come back to that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so by the way, I work on IMS and I work on all those things in standards. So I can I know the technical detail. Can, we can discuss offline also. So next we got an IVR, interactive voice response. So voice is speaking, SMS is sending one-way communication, but there is no handshake mechanism. So only what they have done is they have introduced an IV interactive voice system, which is handshake mechanism with a DTMF. Okay, DTMF means within the same voice call they used to send text. Okay, SMS. So The I mean, the user made a call. You say press one for sales, press two for support, press three for accounting. The moment user user made an option, automatically the corresponding routing used to happen. 
so i'm just telling first initial wise sms now slowly they are adding a interactive sections with the dtmf so this we all have used it earlier days so i'm just moving on so next is the video calling feature slowly okay good i am good with sms audio then slowly we gave it google people started going to abroad or people are started going to different places so they want to get connected to their family friends okay so they want to show them what they are seeing so google came up with a duo fee of facetime facebook came with a facetime there are applications there are many other applications which provides a video callings okay so all these okay these, these video callings you can make a one-on-one -on -one calls or you can make a group calls conferencing okay and then different features like you know that friends have joined they again encryption is one of those things you can take a selfies screenshots for these video calls but one thing you need to understand is video calling is never embraced by the operators video calling is always an ott application or the top application okay because traditionally how we came up with we came up with 1 2g 3g where data is seen like a uh, scarce scarce resource the moment if i use more data my billing rates will be higher so automatically i used to only enable mobile data when required during those times 2 3g 2g times with 4g now we have the gigabit data rates now that is a different things with 4g and everything even though video calling could have been done at the same time wifi came into picture and the wifi calling has taken predominance over video call features rather than the cellular 3gpp even if you remember i don't know when is the last time you made any voice call uh, video call using your cellular i think nobody will proactively go and do that unless otherwise is desperate that's the reason why operators they are telling okay video call no people are good with the voice if they want to do video call they will be using a a uh, high bandwidth like a wifi and they do that one so that is the reason why most of these apps whatever you came for video call okay not only these things there are many other apps which you can use user needs to set it up okay uh, and then earlier we okay and then we used to uh, install those plugins working not working finally we used to make the video calls okay so here next is the video call so video call is a successful because people like to see expressions people like to see faces and all those things but it doesn't got much push from operators because it is not a revenue making source for them okay so next what we have seen when we came to 4g from 3g we got higher bandwidth so video calls came into picture at the same time lte came in, wifi came into picture then wifi calling all those things came into picture okay so next one is rich communication services people are not happy just sending a text out they want to send some emojis they want to send some videos they want to send anything so we came with a rich communication service so again this is between a mobile carriers any of the phones today have rcs inbuilt for example if you take a android phones it has rcs if you take facebook it has rcs services okay so it rcs services are part of ip multimedia systems that means it has been enabled from lte days for us okay it enhances your address book okay earlier days if you add a contact okay on that contact you need to add a picture you need to manually take that picture and add it with rcs type of things right automatically the profile picture if you want can get downloaded based on your settings okay and you can also okay send in the text not just a text you can send some emojis over here some uh, you can download those things you can some okay any of the movies pictures or those type of things this is the rich communication service so this rich communication services not only has been used by on cellular also on wifi any of your wife chat okay day to day communications everything also uses the same framework which has been provided any questions okay arvind if somebody raise their hand please let me know because i am not monitoring that sure 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 yeah, some, somebody has raised hand amrit yes amrit tell me go ahead amrit yeah so nowadays in 5g they are uh, like let's say you are doing video call one to one they are charging that they are planning to charge that 
how how you segregate let's say i am using wifi or i am using a backend as a ip network uh, for the general uh, voice voice network uh, from the 5g service how you segregate that because it's a, just a app right from the user perspective if you are using a whatsapp video call right they can't yeah. charge you because it is considered to be internet bandwidth okay so this charging comes into picture only use operator specific services okay you are using that as a part of your operator in most of your dialer app when you see the phone right it whenever we call we only call for a voice call there is also an option in that operator dialer app to make a video call when you, you mean use to say that, geo, geo join call app right like that yes when you do that one a separate bearer will be established okay to just they have different all these things any of these applications when now they are being set up they tell you what type of qos requirements they have okay so mm -hmm. for voice the qos it is i want a lesser latency so there there is bearer called qca1 okay so for video they have a qca2 they have different jitter latency bandwidth type of requirements so when you make a video call a qca2 type of bearer will come so whatever has data has been pushed via that particular bearer that will be processed by your charging records okay so if you are making a normal whatsapp call or facetime google duo no it is internet bandwidth okay if you are making a geo type of specific video call which you are using 3gpp operator video calls yes a separate bearer will be established and based on that bearer usage of data that will be charged Paras, uh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Uh, no, Pendra. I am from Geo, and Geo doesn't charge for video calling. Even if the separate bearer is established, Geo doesn't charge. Okay. For yeah, but that bearer, how much data has been gone? That the data can be used. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nor no, normally they don't charge now, but if you go internationally, operator to operator, they give charge. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. If, uh, not not in india india they don't charge but if you go internationally so operators they charges uh, separately Correct. Yeah. because what happens is when you go into roaming scenarios right you are mm -hmm. using even though the geos network you are using their roaming partner radio access also so mm -hmm. the operators will have their own uh, mechanisms to charge them but this the whatever the qs parameter you are telling right where exactly this classification happens uh, from the radio base station to the uh, transport network or where exactly? qs is at multiple layers okay there is a n2s qs mm -hmm. that again gets divided between the core network level so that means from the gateways to your mobile phone and the same thing needs to reflect at a local from the core network to the ran and the ran to the ue these are all different qos right for example if i enable a qca1 type of bearer which is a volte okay something features like sps is there semi persisting scheduling so there are type of things which they enable the qos characteristics are met okay we'll take one more question and then move on nishant go ahead Yes, yeah, sir. My question is, uh, if we are using a QCA two, so the experience will be better than the QCA nine, right? Correct. Correct. That is why you are telling like uh, operator can charge it. Other than uh, free video call is available, the experience will Correct. be better in Q QCA two. Yes, right. QCA one is a dedicated, is a GBR bearer, yeah, guaranteed yeah. bitrate bearer. Well, QCA nine is a non GBR bearer. Non GBR. So they if can't are... guarantee anything. So obviously, yeah, when yeah. you give a guaranteed QS. in nothing comes free in life so you need yeah, to pay yeah. for the service so so definitely the experience will be better than if you are using the other ott video calling system yes of course thank you but thank what you, happens is because we are not using that one we are all using ott and people are quite happy with that that is the reality yeah, yeah right right okay because okay. i take i is, i am the in charge of a geo operator requirements from qualcom i talk about north america t mobile at&t so nobody wants video calling from operators okay, okay so okay, that's a real, reality is like this yes okay, okay. yes okay. okay let us move okay. okay so what is the difference between rcs and sms sms as we know it's a plain text whereas rcs is 
people wants all this colorful colorful all the images reports graphs all those things okay similarly then after rcs they said let us do about interactive calling so this means that during a regular phone call you can interact with that person by like, well, like sending some messages downloading some things or okay just making a voice record video voice recording and sending it type of things so rcs has because it is all ip based everything is ip packets so based on that one slowly the interactive calling came into picture and it duplicate okay okay next with the interactive calling is over which everybody will use it in the whatsapp and everything okay so next came the feature called call composer what is call composer so what they said is good the traditional dialer app is very nice i like it but when the person calls me i don't know what is that person wants to do okay i just need to see the face the name and based on that name i have to decide whether i need to take that call i i don't want to take that call okay so okay good so not just by the name let us add some other experiences to the user something called pre call that means the call has not been answered by the user okay for example i have called arvind okay when i call i can also say okay what is your subject location picture i can tell something hey it is urgent can you please take my call or hey can we have coffee this friday at this location i am calling regarding this such type of pre call experiences i can give a context to the user and based on that context the user can decide whether to leave the call now or can say that i am busy right now i got your understanding i understand what why you called later i will call you or you can pick up the phone immediately so these are all the features what has come as part of your call composer and once the user have answered the call there can also be in call experience we can share chat files these are all the rcs whatever you are speaking here here we have spoke about rcs right? those are all these in call experiences okay and then we can also have post call experience okay like hey thanks for calling you type of things okay so or okay we can you can compose additional information okay nice touch basing with you let us meet on friday as we discuss it type of things and also we have enriched call logs okay when this call has been called on what stage you have we enabled disabled type of call loggings so this is a call composer so how many of you have used true caller i think most of you have at least heard of it right a true caller so yeah. true caller is mostly uses most of these things they can give you location it can give you the information subject okay and it can also tell you whether this is a trusted app id or okay there are few headers in the 3gpp okay which says that this, this is a robo call this is non robo call so whenever i'm speaking here right this at a user i am telling you the experience for any of the user experience there should be a a back end technology which supports it that is what we at a standard stock at 3gpp which is more companies driven whereas gsm is more operators driven okay 3gpp it is more dom dominant by the mobile phone or network manufacturers gsm is more operator specific 3gpp says this all the ways i can do it okay the operator says hey out of all those things i think i will use pre call experience they can profile it that is how they work so for all those things whenever we see three caller they have taken all the technology which has been given by 3gpp like the headers what they use and everything and then they have profiled it into a nice use case and application they say okay give me your google id based on google id they get you the basic profile of your profile your name and everything and then based on the community based spamming do you want it to be spam what do you check so they take user inputs also they build their own database on top of that and then they automatically block so, so many things okay so these are all the applications which we have recently seen this true color is like 4 years old app right so based on these applications this is has been developed any questions so in this call composer primarily people are using it for pre call we don't see much of post call experience in call is anyway presented as part of your rcs only okay so Moving today to in line. some cases uh, we have a call and then during the call we may say okay i will whatsapp you my location 
So the, those kind of things will go away, isn't it? You can do it within the call. Yeah, within the call you can do. So operators are experience. trying to move things from OTT to uh, barriers yes. that they can control. Yes. Okay. So if you take take out the okay, uh, okay. OK, I'll come to the next slide. Uh, data channel will help you in doing all those things. I'll come there. OK, so. Uh, earlier now also you can share your location, right? Where are you? Everything using WhatsApp. Similarly, you should be able to share it during the in-call experience. Yeah, okay. understood. so but here this sharing is not what is your current location. I can say, hey, why don't we make it cough cave coffee day at Indranagar and I can give you that location. OK. So 6 p.m. I want to have coffee type of things. This is not your current location. This could be any of the target location. These are can be manually added by the user. It is not that your device current locations. OK, so. And you okay, next when is true color. Next good. So Volte undoubtedly provide an improved customer experience for voice calling. So with the customers experience a rapid succession with OTT over the top communications apps. What else we can do? So when 5G comes, what all we can do? So when we are brainstorming on the requirements of 5G, OK, good. So till now we have done the real time communication. We said let us talk, let us hear, OK, voice call, let us see. And then they said there is a Volta phone, there is a, a, a network, there is a network. OK, OK, and then for all these services, I can do the authentication, I can do the mobility, quality of service, security, robustness, everything good. In 5G, can we expand it? Can we do the touch move? Can we have that real time interaction? So in 5G, what we are moving out from is from communication to interaction. OK, so how do we do that? OK, so we do that using an IMS data channel. Whenever we talk about an IMS, we always talk about a voice and a video. OK, IMS is IP multimedia. Multimedia is all voice and video. There is no text there. Text is all rich communication services and which has nothing to do with this one. So what they said is, hey, I want to have a IMS data channel. OK, this will be along with voice. It is not like internet data what we use. This should be always associated like SMS to voice and to voice related applications. One of the example is Ericsson. They have de uh, demonstrated is using an haptic glove. What they have done is there is an ambulance. There is a patient coming over there, but the doctor is sitting in the hospital. OK, he talks to the whomever is the compounder, whomever is the pipe guy who is bringing the patient on the ambulance from the accident site to the hospital. So if he has an haptic glove type of this one, and using that glove, he can move, the, make the movements. Those movements, while speaking, have been passed on to the application in the ambulance, and he can actually see where exactly are the wounds are there, so that he can be more prepared when the patient comes. So that is what when we say we talk from real-time interactions to real-time touch and move. But we need for this an external sensors type of things. OK, and those sensors will be associated with inputs. Those inputs are sent via this data channel. OK, so through a high quality 5G voice call, now the phone call screen will automatically load the capability for interactivity. And for this interactivity, the main thing is which should, which should not any install any apps OK, from different brands. Everything should happen on the fly or the call. That is a call. So today what happens is if we open any of our mobile phones, there are hundreds of apps which we download. OK, so now if I want to use for application like this Medicare, I should not ask the user, hey, can you go to app store, download that Medicare? No, this app should be downloaded on the fly, on the device at the time during that call. That is the ask. So today we are all working on this. So what are the different interactive calling use cases? OK, so today we can whenever a video call is happening, you can text the user. OK, now once he sent you any picture, there could be some overlay frames on that one. He can like that buttons. Now what is happening is 
in whatsapp or anywhere i need to collectively select that message i need to do a reply all reply to that and then i need to add on top of that okay so here nothing like that so these type of emotions love symbols any of those things can come pop up and then go go away this is they make they want to make it interactive like making calling yes fun okay so similarly with the enterprise id what they happen is whenever enterprise calls he can say this is my id like the call composer what we discussed they i have verified this particular user this vertical user is from this one this is certified this where is it so that provides the user a more authentic authentication like if you use we are talking we have spoken about here the before one if i slide right true color right this is based on community based but here this is not community based this is based on the operator specific one for the enterprise solutions they can give you similarly interactive menu today there is no where these menu screens can be interactive okay for recently my washing machine got spoiled samsung i call them okay so they want an interactive menu so immediately they are sending me an sms and in the sms they are giving all the options and asking me to respond to these things okay so now instead of that sms based or can i get continue do you want to continue on whatsapp and then they send all these whatever they want to push the content different menus right over the whatsapp no now what they want to do is these menus whatever they want to do should be dynamic that means for each user specific they should be able to customize it or based on the uh, options what the network they can should be dynamically able to enable disable type of things okay or any of the remote support using uh, a drones if you want to control okay all those remote supports all those things can be done but the prime carrier is all those things there is something which operators can do there is something which requires an external plugging both the things are there for example of interactive menus these menus can be dynamic the operator should be able to push the images one of the typical examples kripaya wait karo in the line when that comes right people will be listening to some playing the sounds all those things right in is out the sounds the network uh, the enterprise can push you some menus do you would like to browse our categories while waiting and you can push say if i go for any of the uh, amazon would, would what would you like to browse in between so they can push the related content to me in which i am interested the moment i select one they can again push some other menus to me do you like whatever we used to do or oh, in the app they want to come that app into the web browser itself on the dialer am i clear so this is what is today you are seeing this you will see in the next year in all your phones so this is a ground breaking technologies which offer consumer to access a screen sharing okay how many of you have thought i called my father i want to book something my father the he wants to increase his phone font size so over the phone we try to tell him go to settings there will be some options type of things okay how many of you thought that i do, i want something like whatever this webex presentation what i am doing i should be able to give control the moment i give control to some other person he should be able to select my thing and do all those things for me similar thing i want to do if i want to do that how can i do so i want to have that functionality of screen control that means i should be able to access my father's phone till now what is happening my father is sending something i am sending something but still i don't have right permissions on my father's mobiles or any of those things we are discussing but we are not sharing okay now with the screen sharing i should be able to access the settings that means there should also one pop up coming from my father hey can you allow the users to access your mobile phone the moment user consent yes i should be able to go there go to settings click the apps do anything type of, and then increase the font if i want to book train tickets for him using his app so that it comes over him i can do, should be able to send those text over there such type of things okay so and this should not you should not able you should not download any uh, external apps everything should happen only on your dialer screen the app will be downloaded but not through the app store dynamically that is what i will come to that how it will be done. similarly gaming okay gaming everybody knows today 
okay uh Gaming means like, hey, why don't you in Google Store you download one game, I'll download one game. Let us both of them join to the external network using some IDs. And in the external network, let us both of us go to the same room or same game with multiple other users. Okay, like my son used to play Roblox, and there are so many games like Piggy games, some other games. I don't know whether you know. And they need to go to the external server to do that way. Okay, what if if I downloaded a a game and that game should be used one on one both of us. So the same game should be only present on my phone to the user end user phone or any other conference and we should be able to do it independently. OK, or if I download if I develop my own game. OK, I want my friend to test it. OK, such type of that means my own developed apps also. I should be able to share it using that dialer app and then other person and me should be able to do it. These are all what we are working on as part of 5G. Similarly, social collaborations, grouping, what can I do? OK, and this also helps. This is whatever I'm talking is mostly with respect to your person to person. And while consumer to business, business to business also it provide digital experiences, as I told you, right? For example, if you want to download it, if you're calling in call center, OK, and then OLX or any of those things, you can you should be able to browse those things or if you are calling a hotel they should be able to tell you meanwhile they can be able to push you the room images see this room is a mr deluxe suit so what is deluxe suit you should not ask them the moment you talk about deluxe suit automatically the corresponding photos should be pushed the user should be able to see those pictures while speaking dynamically so all those things can be done so adding interactivity and sharing capabilities with the high quality voice, it makes them more convenient for the users and remove to need for separate apps. So main thing is interactivity and sharing capabilities. And the main other requirement what we emphasize is on no separate apps. Like it like a like web browser. In the web browser, whatever app you download in the browser, it is there on the browser. The moment browser is closed, the app is gone. It is not like Amazon download and use it. OLX download and use it. Any of the app? No, I don't want 100 apps over me. It is like more or less like a web browser facilities where you should be able to open it on the screen on the dialer app. We, dialer app is the app what we see when we make a phone call, right? On that one. And in some cases, it is not only user to you, it is network and push also. In case of the consumer to business network, say, I want to enhance your services. Would you like to take that? The moment he says, yeah, okay, then Earlier we've spoken right one bearer for voice QCA one one bearer for video QCA two in the similar way we can for iOS data channel a separate bearer will be established and all the data will be pushed from that. Ha! Huh, I've spoken a lot. Any questions? Yeah, Amrit has a question. Just hold on. Yes, tell me. Yeah, go ahead, Amrit. Yeah, so you are telling right from the dialer app, uh, how can I anyone can push a thing, right? It has to load some web interface or some app. Yes, right, to do that. yes, web interface and app, everything will come, but they will, you don't need to install them. That is a yeah, means it will be on the fly, it will install, means on the fly, it will consume the data, right? Yeah, it will consume the data like on the browser. HTTP, HTML, and any other Chrome. Ah, if you are downloading ah. Amazon.com, the data is coming. You don't ah, need an app. Is, no, no. Yeah, the data is. See, for, let's say I have an app. I use same app to only load the dynamic content. Then it consumes the dynamic content data. But every time I will be dialing, then that the same app will be loading. Then, then, then dynamic content is again loading. So it will always consume more data, right? With 5G coming, data is not a problem, right? In earlier days, okay, yeah, got it. we that, are in KBPS days. Now, yeah, yes, that. 1G, Geo itself is taking 1G plans 2G per day. Use how much you can. Yeah, data, the data is not a problem. I mean, data is not a problem. Privacy. Yeah, but the, the interaction the menu, experience. right? Yes. On, on, the, on the interaction menu side, who will be controlling that? Either the sender will control that or the receiver will control that. Both. Like whatever the pop-up is coming or whatever the pop-up. But if you let's say sender is sending something, but uh, the receiver is not interested in that content, uh, maybe like Bogus channel, right? A lot of times, uh, let's say nowadays HDFC is calling, 
they will say you need a loan i, I say no but they, if they can push a loan uh, what is loan what is thing these are all noisy behavior right we have to take care of uh, other things yes. also correct you need to take care that is the reason why user content is taken before they enrich this one so in case of the business to this one the network will push do you want to enhance your day your user voice call experience the moment you say yes hey are you looking for a why home loans or uh, the insurances they can tell them. okay no no i don't want to do anything that means they should not push any other contents they should play that regular voice message at tt to some vina or something okay if yeah, you are but, interested but who will regulate this user input right they will push you no, the no. high level menu yeah From but the it, high level menu but even, even on, let's say even even user says no but the sender sends it so to to regulate that who will control like like the previously it is content uh, means regulation by 3gpp right now who no, will be regulating no. this previous also what is dot as 3gpp regulate content nobody regulates right content is based on your uh, user feedback 3gpp provides you the framework okay you meant to say that uh -huh, got it only the framework but they whatever they take and they customize it based on that they said it. correct correct the same thing will apply here also one more question is up uh, his name is not visible go ahead it's a number 13069 go ahead yeah please tell me. oh yeah this is nagendra hi nagendra uh, yeah, so how does the programming model change now? Like apps, you know, even Android will start supporting this kind of application development. I have below slides for that one. Just hold on for the moment. I have two more slides oh, covering that one. So it yes, thank you. Yes, because all the apps are Java scripts, correct? They are HTML, and we, if I am from telecom, right? I don't understand Java. Okay, so who understands everything? Full stack developer. I don't know what they do. OK, so we'll come to that. So but this is yeah. what is coming. The main focus of this one is till here before whatever I spoke, right? OK, so those things are already experienced. This IMS data channel is what which you don't know. OK, this whatever I'm speaking now is being standardized. OK, so we are uh, OK uh, from GSMA NG 129. There is a white paper which is not officially uh, open for everyone. It is only for people who are registered for GSMA and then now we are working on NG 134. OK, these are all will come down the line. OK, so there are many use cases what they say you can, which can use IMS data channel, right? Like you can do remote examinations, you can do the machine control, virtual reality. This is a haptic control, what are we talking? AR control, drone steering, so all those things. So how do we do that? Is the next question. So we use Web RTC. So we know what is real time communication. OK, so people there is a web RTC group. Which uh, develops all this uh, real time communication for the web before web RTC. What happens is even voice calls are also supported over browser, but you need plugins. I don't know whether uh, old generation people will understand the moment when I select any of those things, right? Acrobat, Flasher, plugin required. Do you need to download? I used to get one pop up. The moment I download that one, then only that particular service or particular video or audio, I used to do it at one. So, what this WebRTC have done is they have abstracted two technologies. One is there is the JavaScript HTML developers. Their strength is in developing applications, their strength is not in sending voice, sending videos type of thing, what codex I do everything. So what they have done is they have provided simple APIs. OK, like open voice channel, open video channel. OK, so open data channel type of things. So by giving, they said using this plugin in the browser, use those APIs underlying. I will take care of all those things. That is what which they have done. So if I am an application developer and I want to develop any of these use cases, what I source, hey, let me develop a game or let me develop a drone steering. OK, so if I want to develop type of th type of things, 
okay i don't need to worry about how do i underlying what is this rtp communication what is a codex i don't understand if i say hey why do I, shall i use evs codex or shall i use amr i said use something which is good we don't know type of things so they abstracted all those things so this webrtc.org is a, is there and this web okay it is available on all the modern browsers from all major platforms so what 3gpp have done is they have adapted this webrtc as it is but instead of voice and video 3gpp has already taken care of voice and video communications they said okay out of all this webrtc let me take only the data channel part how to establish data send those data okay so this webrtc is implemented as an open web standard and it is regular, regular java script apis and it is also present for example if you use webs whatsapp right that uses webrtc okay it is available in all the browsers whatever you want to do on the mobile phones also the, on the mobile for browsers if you open chrome any of the firefox a safari any of the new latest ones everything have webrtc inbuilt okay this is open source and supported by everybody so if i am a developer or if i want to develop any app and use ims data channel i don't need to understand all the technical aspects of what technology is either i am in 5g 4g i don't need to know okay what all i need to do is i will use this aps provided by this webrtc download that and create my javascripts and these javascripts whatever has been created will be sent over this particular apis like send data api is one of the data okay and then that is how your interactive menus or the content whatever is dynamically selecting now javascript have jsps on the back end fetch the data send it accordingly based on the user selections it will select automatically what are the browsing patterns and what are the associated products and that is how the user to user replication will be done by the application and ims data channel provides you the underlying framework of 3gpp where this data is carried over multiple technologies like 5g 4g even on wi-fi i also able to do it and then underlying technology takes care of ims data channel takes care of the 3gpp aspects webrtp take care of the javascript apps aspects okay so and because of this being an open source we expect many of the community workers many of the people will develop more apps and these apps can be using the ims data channel framework of 3gpp can really create a market value enhance the user experience to the original voice video text or rich communication now it is no more communication right it is more like okay i can do anything with this once i give you a channel Okay, so have I answered your earlier question? Yeah, okay, no, so I guess so. Yeah. Yes. So that is the end of the presentation. So you can go to webrtc.arch, enrich it calling. This is RCC 20. These are the references. Okay. So. But webrtc is already webrtc is already used in the webex call, right? Yeah, long back it is there. It is there from 2016. So, but in five five G, what we are doing then? Okay, WebRTC uses voice and video calls, right? Now three G hmm. and data channel also. Hmm. Correct. Hmm. Now, if before that WebRTC, user have to explicitly write those video call, voice audio call APIs. Hmm. Now they are standardized by WebRTC. If I am a JavaScript developer, I need to download that package, add it, call that function. That is where abstraction is provided. So before 2016, before WebRTC, that abstraction is not there. I I need to download the plugins because uh, now standard yeah, I, standard API for uh, everything. Correct. Standard. Now that I am telling the dialer app uses the browser functionality. And that browser functionality can download any of those things. Browser is HTTP files. HTTP files uses any of your JS and JSPs. Hmm. Correct. So those hmm. can be developed. And browser, all the browser supports WebRTC. In that way, the application developer doesn't need to uh, go through underlying transport mechanisms. 
the transport mechanism doesn't need to under uh, uh, to wonder about what type of application content needs to be gone one i say open video okay the video channel will be open whether i am using evs that one it depends on the bandwidth or whatever is negotiated the underlying layers will take care of it that is where the abstraction is provided okay hey, this is ramnathan here a yes, quick Ram. thing the dialer app which you are referring to uh, is uh, sir, is provided by the service provider unlike other apps provided through the data dialer app is provided by your oem by the phone match phone manufacturer you can okay, change your dialer app provider. not by the service provider for example when you install the uh, true color right here yeah it changes your dialer app to true color app yes okay so when any phone whenever you came right dialer itself is an app by default your oem product like whom your oem if you are using a samsung phone samsung will do that if you using one plus iphone every have have their own dialer app okay so the the difference between 4g and 5g is not to do with the dialer app no. it is to do with the services that are rendered via the dialer app correct so what are you speaking is what are i am talking right even though this is, we are discussing as part of 5g framework okay touch move as long as the same data channel is applicable even for lte also if the operator embraces the technology for lte okay and they mm -hmm. support it the same thing can be done for lte the same thing okay. can be done for wi fi okay. but this uh, it is in any development is uh, inc incremental right initially we yeah. only spoke about talk then sms then mms MMS people didn't like. Slowly, video call came into picture. Then, because MMS they didn't like, they came RCS came into picture. Okay. Then yes. Wi-Fi calling. What happens? Coverage areas issues comes. Then operator in themselves say, let us do Wi-Fi calling. Yes. Okay. If you have Wi-Fi, let us use that one. So in that way, now touch move. This we are talking now as a card like true caller identifying what is the touch move. We are talking now. That means the technology have advanced now. So instead of touch move, we have some constraints. We have the requirements, stage one requirements. The app should not be downloaded left and right. It should be on the dialer itself. It should be interactive. The moment call is one, that is gone. These so, are the requirements. So the dialer does not necessarily have to be from OEM. It can be from the private players also. Yeah, as long as user changes, you have the, all the choice to change. Yes. And uh, one clarification I need. Uh, it was some some time back I heard. Though we say we use voice network to make calls, what uh, what the rumor is, uh, the telecom companies use the data network but charge for the voice. Is that something uh, true? See, now when coming to 4G, right? Everything is IP packets. Everything is data. Okay. There is no charging for voice. Frankly okay. speaking. So Correct. there is no specific special rates for voice, no special rates for data, all charged under the same rate. Correct. Now again, the roaming scenarios are completely different. OK, so but okay. in general, because it's all IP. OK, it okay. doesn't matter where you are, what you are. It is IP packet for me. Everything is data. That is where Geo doesn't charge. They say voice free, SMS free. Everything is our IP. And okay. they only talk about if you see the earlier plans was right. OK, like. Uh, 100 unlimited SMS or 100 talk time. OK, and then uh, I forgot the Tata. They came with um, I will charge you only for seconds, not per mm, minute. Mm, OK, so now mm. that all those things are gone. That is all circuit switcher where they need to establish the circuit switcher bearers. Now it is all IP okay. network. OK, IP data, 1 GB data. And hardly these things are how much. OK, they'll take KBPS wise. Now. Okay. Data is like abundant. We have okay, the one G for every day minimum plans. Uh -huh. Thanks. Thanks for answering. Yeah, it was a nice sure. session. So, thanks. So there is another question How does, asked by uh, uh, Parth earlier. Yes, I'll just read it out. What will happen if it's only 5G support phone? Then how SMS will work? Is voice over new radio work here? Did it work here? OK, see. Uh, if it is 5G only phone also, SMS will work. SMS is supported over IP IMS, as I told. Okay, the yeah. way it happens is SMS first priority is will send over IMS. If IMS failed, it will be sent over the traditional NAS. 
the two or LTE as part of IP network. If that also fails, then we fall back to traditional CS type of things where we send it. That is how that works. If it is a only 5G phone, SMS or IMS will be supported. It will be sent. But only 5G phones will not be there because the it is all incremental. Your phones, I, you can't now say that I don't want GSM. I want only 5G capable phone. OK, so there are multiple offerings for the mobile type of dongle type of devices earlier. OK, which say particular phone, but still some rats can be disabled. But for voice centric devices, it is always all the rats will be present. Yeah, uh, these days 5G phones come with a lot of frequencies, 12 frequency, 15, something like that. Which yes. one we should buy? <laughs> okay, so because that, that frequency, even though it supports many of those things, right? The thing is flexibility, right? that's it. Most of the UE vendors, they need to support all the bands. But the I see 12 and 13. Yeah, some are coming with 12, some are coming with 13. Mm -hmm. So, I, as so I, as does I, it mean that you know today we buy for 12 tomorrow if 13 comes we are already obsolete the phone i don't understand 12 13 you are talking about band combinations yeah some combination yeah 12 combinations and 13 combinations Achha, the 13th is the additional combination you mean ah yes exactly Achha, so either 12 band 12 frequency support or 13th one additional obviously 13th it will not like earlier wi-fi devices right only 2.4 gigahertz then 5 gigahertz came dual mode okay nowadays in that way it is always if you don't have the 13th band you can't go but so why so many i think pre previously yeah one or two were there now this is every day new things are being <laughs> added even when we, when we say 5g because the spectrum, I, mean, I don't know. The hops are different, right? Everybody are using all the spectrums. So whenever they see a gap, right? OK, they try to go into that gap and try to leverage that particular spectrum. And governments get a lot of money from the auctions. OK, so initially 5G comes with FR1 and FR2, like below 5 giga, above 5 gigahertz is all FR2. They want to go up to 70 gigahertz type of things. Correct, but nobody is actually theoretically using those FR2s. FR1 is more practical. Now, say in FR1, they say that, okay, let me use from 2 gigahertz to 3. These are the bands what I give to you. All of a sudden, what happens is in 700 megahertz, one of the frequencies is free. So, what do they do? Okay, 3GPP have to enhance that one. Oh, 700 megahertz is a lower freak spectrum, and everybody would love to buy that. So automatically, automatically they will add a new band for that one. The moment they add that for particular frequency and band, all the combinations will change. That is how it works, right? So what will happen now that tomorrow operator doesn't support this old 5G phones? Or I don't know, when a 5G comes, you know, whatever they claim as 5G phones now, would they really work in this kind yeah, of... See, that's what, like the same thing if you talk about GSMA, right? We used to have GSM in 800 megahertz, 900 megahertz. Same with 1800, right. 1900. Okay, so the typical earlier right. phones are only 800, 900. Okay, and later right. US market is 1800, European market is 1900. If the people who bought purchase phone from there, if they come here, that will not work. If the network have not deployed right. on the same frequency, you need to upgrade your devices because it's a hard limitation, right? Right, so that way, you know what you should be. We should but be very careful in purchasing 5G phones now because we don't even know what frequencies are supported in India. We do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Uh, just, just one more uh, clarification. As in India, the spectrum auction is already completed, so you can refer the uh, internet. Uh, uh, actually, 700 megahertz, uh, 2100 megahertz, and. Uh, uh, uh 3.3 gigahertz and uh, 26 gigahertz these are the frequency band actually the option is completed if you can refer the uh this is spot you can uh, definitely identify which all uh, band the uh, 5g is coming in india you can see n73 and 78 
kind of uh, frequency band so if you if you just search in the internet you will be definitely find out which old band the 5g is coming in, in india based on this spectrum option see the question is today yeah. purchase yeah. 21 gigahertz yeah tomorrow 2025 government has auctioned me 66 gigahertz yeah yeah right right then But then the network 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 network. my phone will not work it will not work it will not work you can <laughs> if you are if you are going to buy presently you can refer these things at Correct. present these are the band where the 5g is rolling out in india as yeah. a, as the three three or four operator so it's a secure like that, from, right? uh, if any new band come definitely definitely it'll be a problem yeah it's a chicken egg. i can't wait let all okay. the bands be complete then i'll fire a phone no with the existing ones what are the real practical deployments take a phone don't wait for the technology to the put the full stop it will never happen and also there is a most favorable band band across the globe uh, n78 and 77 and kind of bands are a most popular band across the globe so that the most of the ue will support uh, this kind of uh, favorable band in uh, no, o, o, o across the world so no, not a big issue i think it's not a big issue uh, any any kind of rare spectrum will come definitely it will be a big problem thank you nishant for that clarification uh, i think we'll take one last question from amrut and then we'll uh, conclude amrut go ahead in 5g the epc is not there you mean to say not in there. the last slide uh, in the last slide 5gc means what is that 5gc 5g core like mme we have here amf upf those things right oh, that okay. is a core so these are these are the functionality of the same functionality but microservice there yeah different network elements because 5g have different verticals right so to spread those verticals the gateway functionalities they have enhanced more like here epc we have only single gateway right so here you have there are many things for session management different like we need more work at 3gpp so multiple things have been done so that for scalability okay so yes so everything is 5gc this is about package yes tell me Uh, so this uh, with this kind of technology would uh, zoom and all this webex will they go out of business or you know will it impact their business it is a combination right so if the zoom app has been downloaded over ims data channel okay so it's a collaboration so they will evolve it is not that they will compete but what no, will but happen the is you that said, uh, apple and uh, Google will start losing out because the importance of Play Store will come down. Yes. Now the operators, account time is data channel. If you see twenty six one one four, okay, they could be operator specific Play Stores. Okay, and the user can now upload the upload the app over there, and then everybody can download from that one. The both mobile originated, mobile terminated, because the crux here is both mobile originated, mobile terminated should use the same app. Yeah, so that's no the main. App. Yeah, that's the yes. main game changer, right? 5G. Yes. Yes, Arvin pointed out. Yes. Now, standalone apps are not required. Like earlier, right? Everything is over browser because of the hardware limitations. They want to have their own apps so that they can have more access to the phone memory and all those things. Now it is again going back from apps go back to the browser type of things. So let us conclude here. Thank you, Opendra, for this uh, wonderful insight to how and where the technology is going. I think this is uh, exciting. Uh, of course, all these are being in the field uh, domain of research at the moment and development. So by the time it comes to consumers out in the real world, how how many more years do you think it will take for all these 5G? Next year you should be able to, to see. Huh? Next, Next year you should be able to see this. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, so yeah. let's hope for that. People, now, Before I, anything else you want see, to say, concluding? Arvind, earlier days, see if you see requirements, right? 2000 to 2005, if you remember properly or not. In 2000, we used to the engineers used to tell, hey, Nokia phone, this is how the navigation should happen. Under that, I want this. Under that. when coming to 2005, right? The user is telling me, if I want to do, I want to do this in way, in this hmm. way, I want this organized in this way. next smartphones came into picture 
I don't want to pre-install apps. I want to download, download, install apps, whatever I want. Okay, now the technology concept to market, the time is being reduced. Now, once the standardization, everything is being done, there are a lot of open points over here. Even though it looks very simple over there, that apps just getting downloaded. Okay, so just last month I presented the gaps to Ericsson, Huawei, China, everywhere. They all made the presentations POCs. They all made the presentation POCs and they companies are not reluctant to identify their gaps. So I need to really push the come came up with the discussion paper. There are the APS doesn't help. The APS doesn't help. And so finally they agreed. Finally they agreed, stating that yes, there are gaps and then these gaps are not under the control of GSMA. We need to send to WebRTC. They need to do that AP change the APIs. So they take time. Okay, so technology underlying APIs, even though so finally in GSM, what we said is we may do it on our own and we provide the apps. So it may take under one year for the standards to do, but already in China, these things demos have already been done for all those things. That means at a demo level, is already there for a prioritization level and mass usage from the from the users, from the app developers and everything. It takes time. So next year you should be able to see all those things according to me. Like true color, everything, right? That came very easy when you see when you say the true color. The moment call composer has been done, I think within three to six months I saw true color. Okay, but here it is a little bit more complicated than that. Thank you. Uh, Hello. So let's hope uh, these things uh, come to the market next year. While the yes. there are <laughs> while the building blocks are open source and you know API driven, it will still be a challenge for developers to move away from Play Store to a new way of working, new way of sharing their apps. So it remains to be seen how successful this will be. Uh, 